Hello everyone, <coughs> welcome back to another video. Well, it's a new month, it is June finally. Can you believe we're halfway through the year already? Uh, that's a, uh, that just seems insane to me, it doesn't even feel like it. <coughs> but a new month means a new goal. And we're setting a goal this month to get $300 in donations. So if I could get 30 of you to help me out by sending $10 each, 15 of you to send $25 each, or just a bunch of people sending five bucks here, six bucks there, and you want to support the channel, and you want to help us out, and you can, that would be greatly appreciated. And you can do that by clicking the links down below for PayPal or Kofi.com. Both of those links are in the description. And uh, that really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it, and we could really use it, so thank you. And don't forget to also buy my books. There's a link down below for that if you want to purchase those as well. All right, so when it, uh, when you move to a different country sometimes, uh, that country can change you in almost imperceptible ways sometimes, and sometimes in very uh, real ways that anybody can recognize. And I'm not claiming that everybody that moves to Cambodia is all of a sudden changed into a better, more spiritually enlightened uh, human being because that's, if you meet some, uh, some other foreigners around here, you will realize that's not true. Some of them are just too set in their ways. But I think if you move to Cambodia and you give it a chance and uh, you're here long enough where it sinks in and then you look back on uh, your life before you moved, I I, I think uh, you, you you'll be able to see some uh, some maybe subtle, not so subtle, uh, but definitely changes. Uh, uh, for me, the more uh, unsubtle, <laughs> not so subtle things has been the uh, uh, you know I I was a I wasn't a huge person I wasn't too overweight but I was in that obese category I always always weighed in about you know 190 to 220 depending on, you know how often I went to the gym and yes I used to go to the gym people are gonna make fun of me for that you went to the gym yes I did uh, but not not all the time and not as often as I should and then I would try to make up for it by going way way too hard way too fast and it was a very unpleasant experience. But yes, I used to go to the gym. But, but I was always kind of a bigger... I mean, you know, I had the big beer belly. I ate a lot of fried foods, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, I noticed uh, after a few months here that I was losing some weight. And then after about a year, I realized I've lost a, a lot of weight. Uh, not too rapidly, though. It didn't happen overnight. It wasn't one of those extreme weight loss dealios nobody gave me a parasite to swallow so it would uh, you know chew up my intestines or anything <laughs> and that's a real thing you can check that out pretty gross I kind of liked it but not for me but yeah I just feel good and part of the reason I think is because a I, I, I have a tendency I, I do have a tendency still, which I must overcome daily. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can get quite comfortable. Uh, some people might call it uh, lackadaisical, uh, and really mean people will just say lazy. But yes, I, I can get really lazy uh, for long periods of time. Uh, when I'm allowed when I'm allowed to and when I have nothing else going on It's always been an issue with me uh, And back home it was just uh, you know, I would yep, got something in my flip-flop here a little stone Ew, okay. And at home man, I, I would just uh, I wouldn't leave my apartment to I with this all my days off were just spent 
and const in my apartment with my video games and my TV and my pizza rolls and my Domino's delivery and uh, you know a 30 pack of a uh, natural ice for the weekend I didn't go anywhere I wasn't social I didn't walk anywhere I would drive my car to the end of the driveway just to check my mail because who <laughs> Who wants to walk around in the snow that you know you know that whole 10 feet that's ridiculous <clears throat> well that, that's just uh, you know and, and it wasn't lazy like in the general sense like you know I went to my job every day I did my job well I was there for over 10 years etc etc but when I had nothing to do when I didn't have a goal or anything to uh, go on that that was me just what I wanted to do most was nothing. And nothing is what I did most of the time. So being over here, I think there are a couple things. First of all, walking. I walk as much as I can. Sengalai likes to take the pass apps because she's always complaining about she's hot. I'm like, well, you know, you lived here uh, uh, your whole life. That should be, you, you should kind of be used to that by now, you know? <laughs> I swear sometimes I think I'm more Cambodian than she is. Uh, so like, yeah, it's going to be hot, but it, I find walking relaxing. It helps me get into my thoughts, you know. If, I, if I'm stuck on a story or, so, or something uh, for one of my books or for an anthology, when I'm walking, I can think about it. Just let my subconscious brain do its thing. And that usually helps. Helps relax me. So in addition to the exercise... One thing you'll notice here is, uh, if you eat locally, especially, uh, is that the food here is very, very fresh and very, very good. I mean, we have this thing in America called farm to table. And believe it or not, that's kind of a recent thing to charge people more money because, look, it came right from my farm directly to this restaurant with no middleman. Or this store with no middleman. And because of that, we didn't have to pay a middleman. But because it's healthier, we are going to charge you three times more <laughs> than you would at a regular grocery store uh, that has a middleman. Uh, because it's supposed to be healthier. But, but they've been doing that here for years. That, that's how they still do it. You go to the markets uh, and... That's what you see, the fish you see there, the chicken, the beef, the pork, uh, the vegetables, the herbs, the fruits. They're all there and uh, they are all fresh. Uh, they're just, you know, uh, a lot of locals here rely on fishing, rely on farming and raising animals specifically for vendors at the market and then the vendors rely on people like us to purchase them and it's kind of a circular economy you know it goes from this farm the farm get, the farmer gets up early in the morning does his thing where the fisherman gets up early in the morning catches his fish loads them in the back of a truck takes them to his customers at the markets where they will purchase them for a certain amount of money per kilo and then they sell it to us for uh, profit and because the food is so fresh here I eat a lot more vegetables I eat a lot more herbs than I used to I do not eat a lot of fried uh, junk food uh, I still have cravings sometimes I'll still get a burger and fries sometimes I'll still get a pizza you know when I have the money but generally I eat, uh, I would say, 95% local food, either at a restaurant or from a street vendor or, you know, buying uh, most of the time, buying it at the market and saying, well, I will cook. And uh, there are a lot of locals here who are not meat eaters. And so I've had some amazing vegetarian dishes as well. I'm not going to discount that because there are a lot of vegetarian places in 
see them reap if that's your thing and I've had some amazing dishes where I didn't even miss any any of the meat because they're cooking with ingredients they grew up with uh, their preparation and the, the spices and herbs and everything they add uh, is a tradition going back many 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 generations and you know the old saying if it's not broke don't fix it and that's kind of what they go by here so yeah part of my weight loss I think has been because of those two things basically uh, you know it's, it's a tropical climate so it's always hot and I'm out in the sun and I'm walking and then of course eating eating right so it's not like I lost weight and became weak and emancipated and not being able to raise myself out of bed it wasn't like a sickness I just lost a lot of weight. <clears throat> uh, another way it's changed me is in my attitude because I was really, I mean, I, to a degree, I'm still sarcastic and cynical, especially to my foreign friends. <laughs> Ask any of them, they'll tell you. I tend to blurt out some of the stupidest stuff maybe at the wrong time. I just can't help myself. Uh, but for me, it's all it's all in the name of uh, uh, laughter, you know, trying to be funny and comical. <laughs> not really, not really mean it. But back home, I was really sarcastic and cynical, and not not in a very nice way. Like my sarcasm was more toward the a broad-edged sword kind, where uh, I probably hurt a lot of feelings, probably. Uh, burnt a lot of bridges with people uh, things like that but I used to always have this attitude and I, and I still see this online everybody sees it online oh man people suck I don't like people this world would be better without people I, uh, and uh, I, I don't think so now I I mean when I first got here I had an issue where I was always kind of curious as to why everybody was being so nice why they all wanted to say hi why why did they always want to see my bags when I went grocery shopping like they were just looking oh what you got and you know I'm always like what what's your angle buddy what are you hoping to get from this <laughs> my my guard was up my suspicions were way high you know because in America you don't do that you don't looking somebody in the eye could be could be a sign of aggression and the next thing you know they're pulling a gun <clears throat> but here I've learned not to be too cynical just because of the kindness I've met with from others just because of the people I talk to uh, I said that in my video you know the number one reason to move here the people and I still believe that uh, but yeah if you want to know more about why just go ahead and check out that video it's down below I won't go into it again, but yeah, just really friendly, really nice. They don't want anything when they're asking you these questions. They are just curious about you because you come from a foreign country and they're really, really happy that you're in theirs and they want to share some of that knowledge with you and they want to you to share some of your knowledge about living in another country with them. As it should be. So nothing nefarious, but it took me a while to get out of that mindset like uh, every time somebody so every time somebody looked at me like uh you know they wanted to sit down and have a beer i'm like ah you know what no <laughs> i don't know what you're getting at you're trying to get me drunk then what's going to happen am i going to lose a kidney uh going to wake up in a bathtub with a with a you know my sides cut open i don't know what's going on here so i did have to learn to get over that but i think now my my outlook on life is more altruistic it's more positive because when you come to a country like this and you see the poverty and you see the hardships you see that a lot of things they do because of the lack of infrastructure and opportunity a lot of the things they do here has to be has to be rigged it has to be done other than the way you you would have to think it you have to think outside the box a lot of times and when you come here and see that and see that they are you know making three four bucks a day trying to feed their family on that and yet they're so willing to just you, you never hear them complain about it I mean that's 
they're willing to have you in and they'll make you every, every last bit of food they have yeah. if they're having a foreign guest come over because they're just friendly so the people who say well you know uh, poverty is what leads to an increase in violent crime yeah that might be true for America but uh, uh, not here <laughs> otherwise this place would be one of the most violent places on earth <laughs> when in fact it's one of the safest places. So, yeah, my attitude has changed a lot. Things that would bother me normally back home don't bother me here. And everybody's gonna have certain things that bother them, I'm no exception. There are some things that get under my skin. When I'm able to uh, not dwell on it, I'm able to just kind of brush it off. I say, well, it is what it is nothing I can do to change it right now so just have to accept it. but yeah and I think mostly it's this uh, it's kind of freeing when you're in another country uh, you know you just feel a little bit freer you don't feel bound by all the all the ropes mentally that you had back home if that makes sense all the things you thought were normal and took for granted over here they're not so you don't have to worry about uh, feeling like uh, the odd man out in a group of people because well, one thing if, if it's the only thing if it's the only thing the one thing you have in common is you all came from a different country you all came halfway around the world to come to this small country called Cambodia and you're all here <laughs> and I think that's where all understanding starts is with something small but common among people and once you have that you can expand that out in many different ways and you'll find that here all kinds of clubs and groups and activity things for you to join no matter what you're into you can probably find it here some foreigner or some locals are started a group about almost Almost anything I can think of. <laughs> Even some things I didn't know existed. I... So, uh, yeah, you'll always find uh, new and interesting people to talk to. And uh, you just begin to see how much more alike you are with other people than you are different. And that's that can only be a good thing, I think. All right. That'll do it for this one. Check out all my links down below. Be sure to check out all the other channels I've listed down below for more good information. And from Seeing Reap Cambodia, I will talk to you.